Hi, welcome to the 14 day weather forecast. There's been a very summery flavour to the weather around here recently and to go with it some spectacular sunsets. Here's a picture I took from my office window on a Monday evening. Very, very red and I've just enhanced the colours there a teeny weeny little bit. Now, I think through the next couple of weeks, the focus is going to be on mild conditions like it has been for much of the year so far. This table is taken from the UK Met Office and it shows mean central England temperatures for each month. The key thing to note is that so far, every month has been above the average. Quite incredible. I don't know where we've ever had a year where all the months have beaten the 30-year norm, but maybe we're on track to do it this time. The coldest month relative to the norm, or January, the anomaly there, only, only 0.8 Celsius. Likewise in June, but also September there, 0.9 was somewhat closer to the norm than most of the other months, but it really is quite exceptional. And October currently is tracking above the 30-year average as well, although that's only provisional to the 15th. I think, though, the next couple of weeks may help that continue to be the case. Now, I'll begin by taking a look at the view across Europe and the North Atlantic. The animation runs from 18 GMT, Tuesday the 18th. At the outset, the UK is sandwiched between high pressure to the north, low pressure to the southwest. And as I run the sequence, what we see happening is that low pressure becomes more dominant, the high pressure slips away, and as we head towards the weekend, the chance of wet weather increases in all parts of the country. Showers or longer spells of rain, also the possibility for it to become quite windy. The devil, of course, is in the detail, and it's very difficult to pin that down at this range. So if you've got activities planned for this weekend, keep up to date with the short range forecasts. Into the early part of next week and low pressure remains dominant, further wet periods for all parts of the UK and with winds coming from the southwest for most of that period, potentially temperatures stay above the average. But just to illustrate this in a little bit more detail, I'll run this air temperature sequence, again based on data from the GFS model. It's a little bit arbitrary, but the blues you can think of as indicating cold air, the yellows average or mild. To begin with, on Tuesday the 18th, there's somewhat colder air there across Scotland, but that quickly gets pushed away. Then really through the entire week, the blues stay to the north of the United Kingdom. It's a mild scenario, not really any sign there of cold conditions pushing down across the country, perhaps just flirting at times there with the far north. What that means then in terms of two metre temperatures, I'll just quickly run through a few charts because they're very similar really. The first one, 15 GMT, Wednesday the 19th. 1617s in southern and central regions. At this point, it's significantly cooler still in the north. If I jump forwards to Friday, temperatures are climbing. 19s in the south there, eastern counties there of, of, of England. Even in the north, temperatures are now a, a little bit higher. By Sunday, more of the same. And by Tuesday, Nothing really changes. Above average, significantly so in the south. And another point to note here is that nights look likely to be very mild as well. Maybe colder on some in the north, but in the southern and central regions, often temperatures will be staying in double figures. Really quite notable for this time of the year. One other point I mentioned is that it could become quite windy at times. Just to illustrate that, this is 15 GMT, Friday the 21st. It's showing wind gusts, 40 miles an hour or so in the southwest. 
lighter winds as you head northwards and eastwards. And I think that really sets a theme for much of a period. Strongest winds often in the west and the southwest, closest to the area of low pressure. With low pressure having a lot of say in things, there will be rain around, as I've been mentioning. The charts here show aggregated totals for days 0 to 5, ECM on the left, GFS on the right, so the two global models, ECM the European one, GFS the North American equivalent. The distribution of rain, a little bit difficult to pin down here. Probably the highest totals in northern England and western parts of the UK. But as I say, there is quite a bit of variance there across both of those charts. Moving forwards to the 0 to 10 days period, the amounts have increased everywhere, significantly so. On both of these, the wettest conditions now more clearly show up as being in the west and parts of the north. In fact, they indicate some very high rain totals are possible in parts of Wales and southwestern England. I think quite good agreement on the general theme, all parts of the UK can expect rain through the period, the wettest conditions probably focused on the west and the southwest. So, how do the deterministic models compare with each other at the end of the first week? Do they all point towards this low pressure dominated scenario? Here's the GFS, just as a recap, Tuesday the 25th, low pressure there close to the UK, perhaps, perhaps somewhat drier there in the southeastern counties, but it's an unsettled theme. Very similar with the Canadian model, the German icon, the European ECM also low pressure dominated. Finally, uh, the UK Met Office Global, the format of this chart's a little bit different today for reasons that I'll not go into, but hopefully it's clear that low pressure is also dominating here. An unsettled end to the first week, good cross-model agreement with winds coming from the west to southwest, generally mild, but showers or longer spells of rain are possible in all areas. Well, how is week two looking? Will that unsettled and mild trend continue or is a change on the way? Here's the 16-day GEFS plot for London. Air mass temperatures across the top. The trend is very clear. Above average, the thick purple line stays above the 30-year norm, which is shown by the thick black line, throughout the second week. There are a few cooler runs in the mix. There always will be. And also a number which bring very warm air for the time of the year across seven counties. But Taken as a whole, above the norm would summarise things nicely. Rainfall along the bottom here, spikes continue to appear. The risk of rain is ongoing. It could be quite wet at times. Two metre temperatures for London, so the data table generated from the GEFS. The trend is probably towards somewhat cooler conditions. The amount of orange decreases, the light yellow increases and the light yellow is going for maximums of between 11 and 15 Celsius. All in all, though, it's favouring a mild scenario, just maybe very mild conditions giving way to milder ones towards the end of the forecast period. Up to Manchester, the air temperature profile is very similar. It's above the average. The anomaly perhaps just a little bit smaller than it was on the London one. The rain profile, well, oh, that's also the same general theme. The risk continues throughout the period. The two metre temperature data table for Manchester. The yellows here are dominant rather than the oranges. So cooler than in London, but really that's just indicating what one would expect as you head northwards, temperatures tend to be lower in the UK. Not always, but mostly it is the expectation. Up to Glasgow, the air temperature profile here. Once more, it's above the average, 
although later on it does dip back towards it. There is something of a cooling trend there. Maybe worth keeping an eye on, see whether that continues to appear. MV ensemble updates through the coming days, but all in all, it's relatively mild. Across the bottom, lots of spikes, more than there were on the London and Manchester charts, so probably indicating a greater risk of rain in the West. But the, the, the trend is really a very similar one to the more southern locations. The two meter temperatures data table for uh, Glasgow. Yellow is dominant early on, so 11s to 15s, then the greens increasing through the second half of the second week. Those are runs going for between 6 and 10 Celsius. A cooling trend there, quite mild early on, maybe close to the average later, perhaps a chance of some colder incursions. But all in all, nothing out of the ordinary. The 10-day GEFS mean surface level pressure plot generated from all of the runs in the ensemble, quite consistent, low pressure, centered to the west of the UK, and a southwesterly flow covering the country, supporting that idea of it staying mild. So does the European ECM ensemble, very uh, consistent with the GEFS, quite an amplified pattern, which could, in the winter months, lead to cold or very cold conditions. It's what, what we'd be looking for, rather than a flat westerly flow across the Atlantic. But, of course, if an amplified pattern sets up as it has done here, it means mild weather, because the dip there, the trough, is to the west of UK, and it leads to mild air being pulled up from the southwest or the south. Good consistency there, though, between the GEFS and the European ECM Ensemble. Finally, the mean surface level pressure data table for York, going back to GEFS data. Not much of a trend here, perhaps an indication of some deep areas of low pressure coming into play. The blues there, 981 to 995 millibars. Generally, though, it's a mixed pattern through the second week. Low pressure having the upper hand. There could be a signal there for high pressure to start building towards the very end. But with a big spread of solutions, it's really difficult to draw any conclusions. As I say, there are still a number of those blue runs appear in the low pressure dominated ones even towards the end there. It's a little bit up in the air by the end of week two. So to summarize, week one, the focus is on changeable or unsettled weather, showers or more organized, organized bands of rain pushed northeastwards across all parts of the UK often very mild in the south or even quite warm, temperatures somewhat closer to the average in the north and particularly Scotland. Week two, unsettled rain is likely in all areas, could be windy at times as it could actually during week one. Temperatures more often than not above the average, very mild at times in the south, perhaps cooling down towards the end especially in the north, but low confidence, of course, on that development. So, oh, there we have it. I think there was quite a lot of repetition there with the M word, mild, but that's what the data points towards. There's nothing I can do about it. At this moment, the focus remains on above average temperatures as it has done for most of the year to date. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, then as ever, please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons below. Thank you for watching now. Bye.